All right, guys, so after a lot of requests, even though I think I have did it quite a lot of times, but maybe, I guess, to the new viewers, they want to exactly know what is actually in the Mad Max build. What components went into it? What kind of work went into it? So let me just do a quick video about basically the entire build. I got the Hayabusa right there looking sharp, black and chrome. Look at that, with Mad Max. How can you beat that setup? So anyway, let's uh, let's go over it. Um, if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. 22 Road Glide standard, but it has a lot, a lot of stuff done to it. And right there is the 23 Suzuki Hayabusa that we're just getting started tinkering with it. Uh, we did a bunch of little things. If you guys haven't seen yet, I did get a new wind shield, which is a little tiny bit taller, and it's like jet black. It looks so good gives me a lot of wind protection i put my phone charger on i put the right there the heated gear harness i did the tail tidy which came out really really well and I took the stickers off and the reflectors off little little stuff like that but anyway that's uh high boost is not about today we're gonna go over the entire mad max build front to back so this way because believe it or not, a lot of people are asking me like on TikTok and Instagram, hey, can you please give me an absolute full build spec on the bike? So that's what I'm going to do today. So let me start off with the bar setup only because I want to turn the lights on. And you guys may get uh, a little bit confused as far as why I do not have an ignition switch there. So what we did as far as the bar setup, we used the Krauss I believe it's a wolf kit wolf pro kit so what that includes is the triple tree from Krauss it includes the uh, the steering lock okay if you guys had any questions right there is the steering lock I have a key for that so that actually removed the entire that plastic nacelle all that plastic housing the ignition switch and I no longer have an ignition switch. So we got the Kraus triple tree. We have a eight and a half kickback riser and we have a ODI bar, which is four inches. So I got about, I want to say a 12 to a 12 and a half inch rise on the bars. And I love it. It's perfect height. I like that they, uh, that the risers are kicked back. It should the seating position is really super incredibly comfortable And I could also kick the bars back by unloosening uh, the top clamp right there I could also kick the bars back a little bit if need be so that's the bar setup I also have heated grips from Harley-Davidson. They work well, they work very well. I can't say they work bad. Probably in the 20s, temperatures in the 20s, you're definitely going to 20s, 30s, you're definitely going to need a heated glove. Harley grips, I forgot, I forgot. If anybody knows, leave a comment down below uh, to help me out. Also have the Kraus clamp covers uh, right there. So that's the bar set up. Stock mirrors, I have the Memphis Shades handguards. Uh, incredible you have to have them and then I have I get a lot of questions these are the flow motorsport MX style levers and they are breakaway and they are also adjustable so this way you could bring the lever closer or further depending on how big your hand is or depending on how you like to feel what else I got the uh, quad lock phone wireless phone charger uh, because I have the case, I've always used it. I have the quad lock uh, mounts in my cars and the vehicles, so I use that. And then this is a Garmin Zumo XT uh, mount, uh, satellite navigation unit mount, and that's also um, that's wired directly to the battery. And then my wireless phone charger right there. I I re actually ran a USB right up to the front of the bike, as you guys could see. Um, and that gives me the wireless charging capabilities. That also, you have to run underneath the tank and mount it directly to the battery. 
I also have my heated gear. So three things mounted directly to the battery. The heated gear dongle, Garmin Zumo XT, and the wireless phone charger by Quadlock. I think that's it. That's only, that's a RAM mount set up for my camera. A lot of people ask me about that uh, when I use to like moto vlog. I think I already said stock mirrors. So that's kind of the bar setup area. You got the Krauss uh, gauge cluster, which is awesome too. It just looks really, uh, really tricked out. I really like the look and I like that it's all open now. Also with this setup, you could adjust your suspension really easy because it's all open. Otherwise, you know, stock, you would have all that plastic and stuff covering that. Okay, so that's the bar set up. So I do not have the ignition switch. So you may ask, well, how do you start your bike? I only need to have the key fob on my person to start the bike. I, there, obviously there is no ignition switch. So all you need is the key fob and then you just come here. It's basically like the CVO. You just click the button and everything turns on. And then you click it off and that's it. So basically, if the key fob is in the vicinity of the bike, you will be able to start the bike. If it's not, nothing is going to happen. There is no ignition switch. I like it, it's simple. I don't have to throw another switch on or off, so it just makes life a lot simpler. All right, going to the front, let me turn the power back onto the bike. Let's go over the lights. Lighting is very important. If somebody out there is going to tell you, ha, your bike looks stupid because it has too many lights, or why so many lights, or why is it so bright, don't even listen to that mumbo jumbo nonsense. If you ride a lot, and if you ride at night especially, you definitely want, I don't wanna say, you don't wanna make it like a carousel, but the more light, the better. Especially in the back, the brighter the lights are, the better people are going to see you so they don't hit you. And the more light in front, if you ride at nighttime, you're going to be able to see the road. And me personally, I ride a lot. So I wanna be able to see the road as far down the road as possible, off to the sides as much as possible. I want as much visibility as possible so I'm safe, so I come home to my family, so I don't hit a deer, I don't hit a pothole, or anything up way ahead in the road, I'm going to be able to see. So, you know, don't listen to the the the, the naysayers and, and the haters saying, you know, you got too many lights on your bike, whatever. You know, I'm all about keeping a classy look and I believe we always achieved that, whether it was Silverback or Mad Max. But you don't wanna obviously, you know, put so many on to where it doesn't really make sense, but, you definitely want to be able to be seen in the back and you definitely want the road to be visible in front of you. So what we did is we have the Ventrim lighting. Now again, this doesn't necessarily obviously give you a lot of lighting uh, to the front, but it just looks badass. I love the light. It just, it just breaks up kind of the fairing with the windshield and that's why I love that. Um, also, with the road blades right here around the fairing. It's just, I like it because it's a nice touch. Now where we're getting the actual light from to light up the road is we have the fang bezel lights on the side, right? And then we have the white turn signals with the white halos. I decided to go white. I wanted everything nice, LED bright white. And the monster, of this setup in the front are the Ciro 3D light cannons. And that is what I'm telling you, those two light cannons are three times brighter than this headlight, even in a high beam position. So what I did was I basically, since obviously this is a road glide, front fairing is stationary um, and it, the headlight doesn't move unlike a street glide, I actually took these lights, if you could picture, I took these lights, um, the two light cannons, and kind of tweaked them a little bit off to the right, and then the left one a little bit off to the left. So this way, 
the road, it's they're all not shining straight down the road. I'm actually getting the right side and the left side of the road. It helps to see if anything is off in the bush or in the woods or if a deer is about to come out. Also helps with making turns, you know, at nighttime. You could kind of see into the turn. It really, really helps out. And these I actually put switched on the high beam switch. So if you could see, if I put my high beams on, then the main beam comes on on the light can and with my high beam. And let me tell you something, I'm gonna do, I need to do a specific video about this because I wanna show you guys how important. I also wanna show you how bright they are. So that's coming up probably in the next couple days, but that's how I wired it. You could wire it in a couple different ways on a separate switch, but I just wanted everything. Um, basically right now the halo is on the light cannon and then when I turn on the high beam, the high beam will come on on the main headlamp and then the high beam, the, ma the main bulb inside um, will come on on the light cannon. So I just love it. It's absolutely killer bright. So now let's go to the back and again, super, super bright. And I just think it just looks absolutely awesome. And I didn't want to put any more on because it is super bright. I think we still kept a nice classy look in the back. So we have the Ciro 3D bag blades. And then I've been getting a lot, a lot of questions about this um, on all the social media, media platforms. But this is the Ciro 3D Latitude Tail Light that is Bluetooth. You could actually adjust how the flashers blink, which is fantastic. It is curved wrap around in black. And then also the Ciro 3D curved license plate bracket with the LED for the plate. Looks fantastic, I'm telling you. At nighttime, it's, it's just so bright. As soon as you put on the brake, it is literally like blinding. But I have the Latitude tail light. You see how it's set up now that it goes with the bag blade? It just looks so, so badass. Excellent products, excellent customer service, excellent company to deal with. Love them and uh, love the product. Never had any issues with the products. And I ride through all kinds of weather, rain, temperatures, and you know, never had any issues. All right, so let's go to the front now, uh, to the top. I used to have the Clockworks a uh, nine inch sport flare windshield and it was great. I love the windshield, not only for the wind protection, but they just look badass. I think they make the best windshields out on the market. Um, and then Clockworks reached out to me and said, listen, we just came out with 11 inch. Would you like to try it? I said, hell yeah. They sent me the 11 inch with the Clockworks windshield trim, which just looks awesome. And this is the 11 inch and I'm six foot two inches tall about 215 pounds, this is much better. If you're a taller guy, the 11 inch is your windshield, not the nine inch. And I don't, I don't think it takes away from the bike. I think it looks super sporty, but the wind protection that you get from it, from the extra two inches is phenomenal. What else do we have here? Okay, so let's go down. I have the Road Glide. ST, a stock 22 whatever Road Glide ST black, vivid black front fender. That's straight from Harley Davidson. Just talk to the parts guy, he'll order you one. Um, and then, uh, what else? We have the Figurati Designs axle uh, nut covers and axle covers right there. We also have Figurati Designs cam plate cover. And then we also have Figurati Designs custom swing arm caps. Links down below in the description if you guys want to check it out. And right there are some Kuryakin block off plates to uh, block off the holes from not having the uh, pillion foot pegs on, the passenger foot pegs on. I don't ride anybody, nobody comes on my bike. So that's why I always take off the passenger pegs and use those block off covers. You guys definitely seen, I'm sure if not, we just got the wheels, stock wheels powder coated in this super chrome finish, super chrome color. 
and I think they came out really good. Definitely looks a lot better in person. I think it looks good on camera as well, but I'm super happy with the finish. We have the stock Dunlop tires still on it because I gotta, I gotta eat them up. I'm not gonna throw away a good pair of tires. They're not great, but they're not bad. I'm definitely gonna wear them out. And then we're gonna switch over to the Michelin Commander 3s. Stock rotors, I got a brand new set of brake pads because their fork seals um, were leaking. So I have a brand new pair of stock pads. And then what we did, by the way, the front brakes are fine. The bike is about, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds lighter than stock now. So brakes work fine. I don't have any plans on, or you know, plans on changing the rotors at any time. I didn't have good luck in the past with like big brake rotor kits and stuff, so I'm not doing that. I did paint the caliper covers in a high gloss black and they look awesome. You guys could do that as well. You could check out those videos, see how I did it, super easy. What else? Okay, front suspension. Um, oh yeah, got my logo there, oh yeah. <laughs> front suspension this is where it gets pretty pretty tricked out so it's plus two front and back that means it's two inches taller in the front two inches taller in the back so stock ride height I believe is a 12 inch shock in the back normally people go 13 inch I went 14 inch so let's go to the front first so the front, we also powder coated the front fork legs in the same color, the Super Chrome. We have a GP plus two cartridge, fully adjustable, which is also sprung for my weight. Preload, rebound, and compression, all adjustable through the top forks, as you guys could see. Super simple, I could get in there easily and adjust it. So we have the GP cartridges plus two, and these are Diamond Lane Black Anodized Plus 2 49 mil fork tubes um, to accommodate the two inches taller suspension on the cartridge. Uh, we just replaced the seals. We used, uh, actually, we used fork seals from a Dyna, which come with dust caps, a 49 mil as well. So we have that and it's actually perfect now, no leaking or anything. Um, okay, so that's the suspension. The back suspension is 14 inch Legend Revo Arc suspension. People are asking me why are they all black? I just never put the sticker on them because I think they look sinister and pretty cool in black. What else? Yeah, so 14 inch shocks in the back, plus, so it's plus two in the front, plus two in the back, 14 inch shocks in the back and plus two GP cartridges in the front. Let's stay in the front here. We have uh, Santoro Fabworks crash bar. I do not have the chachos on it because I just didn't want it any longer. Um, that's where we have the light cannons mounted to. So removed the big crash bar, got rid of that. Then you have the brackets that actually get bolted up underneath. You get rid of those brackets. You do have to buy, if you guys could see that Y bar underneath right here, and that new bar right here actually holds the fairing up. You could pick that up on eBay. It's, it's really inexpensive, but you need that if you wanna put the Santoro Fabrics crash bar on it, um, because otherwise there's no brackets and the fairing would be kind of moving around on you and flimsy. So this bracket actually holds the bottom of the fairing where the other brackets came down to the crash bar and used to hold it. I don't have any oil cooler fan on it now or love jugs on it right now because I'll get into the motor. I don't feel that there's a need to right now, but that could change. I might put an oil cooler fan on all the love jugs in the future. So that's the crash bar. Okay, next big thing. We have the Arlen Ness mid controls and boy, oh boy, I love them. I love these mid controls. So the mid controls, you're able to remove the big two brackets that are underneath sitting really low, always scraping. If you like taking some twisty turns, you're always scraping and you're always worried about them bottoming out and you know, you could either high side or low side. So uh, got rid of that and I just love 
the foot positioning on the mid controls. No, I do not need a big floorboard. A lot of people mention, wait until you go on a long ride. You're gonna, no, I don't want them. I'm a million times more comfortable having the mid controls with my foot sitting more back this way a lot of the weight is on my legs and not like kind of directly onto my spine with your legs being more forward all of that weight is you're kind of your spine's compressing down onto the seat so these mid controls i love really nice product really nice machining i think it's really beautiful product the shifting is super nice and crisp because i guess how they did the linkage and the mechanical advantage it's just i love it i just absolutely love it though that's one of my favorite things i've did to the bike that totally i think transformed this bike into something different all right that's the mid controls let's uh let's go to the seat absolutely the best seat on the market the most comfortable baddest looking seat on the market saddleman step up seat i love the step up i had the sdc pro gripper on silverback i think the step up is even more comfortable i don't i don't know what they did inside of it all i know is maybe these like big heavy pleats right here have something to do with it but whatever it is it does seem like it's a little thicker i do feel like i'm sitting a little higher possibly and maybe a little bit forward but i love it i absolutely love the seating position in conjunction with the mid controls how my bike is set up i wouldn't have honestly any bike any other way in the future this is the go-to setup for me saddleman step up seat black with the silver stitching silver logos phenomenal seats the best seats if i need something next step comfortable i'm going to the road sofa uh absolutely they still look fantastic and it's probably going to give you a lot even a lot more comfort but a lot of people ask me and say oh well you know can you go a thousand miles or you know 1500 miles on a saddleman seat I put 25,000 miles on Silverback, um, probably about 20,000 miles of that on an SDC Pro Gripper seat. You know, we went to Sturgis, I had the SDC Pro Gripper seat, almost 6,000 miles. Yeah, it's comfortable, absolutely. By far the most comfortable seat, um, in my opinion. I just love it. And the build quality is fantastic, and the style and design of the Saddleman seats, I think are bar none the best in the business. So absolutely love it. Definitely check them out. All right, what else we have here? All right, let's, I guess, stock tires. I already told you we powder coated the wheels. I already told you that. Let's do the engine um, upgrades, modifications. So this was a standard road glide. It did have actually a black cover here. My boy, actually a viewer, came down and hooked me up with this chrome one. Thank you so much. So we got that on there now. I think it really complements the entire bike really well now. So starting inside, S&S &S 475 cam, stock oil pump, stock, stock cam plate, S&S &S 475 cam, uh, Screaming Eagle high flow air intake. We have the infamous, what you guys love, Chromeworks 2 into 1. Outlaw exhaust. So that right there, we're pushing, I think, about 117 horse or 116 horse with about 118 foot-pounds of torque. More than enough. It's only a 107. I've had, obviously, huge power on Silverback, but I'm super happy with this setup. It's just super, super reliable. It's got 40, 45% more horsepower than stock and sounds like an absolute beast. A lot of you guys were asking me about the magic that's in there i don't have a baffle it is actually a reducer so i don't know if you guys could see that let me put on my phone flashlight let me see and maybe we could get some light up in there does that help so if you guys could see it's only like a reducer so it takes that big openness of the whatever four four and a half inch pipe and it kind of drops it down to about two inches and I guess it's from the back pressure. 
that the reducer makes, you get that real thump that real bark, that real snappy sound, which I'm telling you, Silverback sounded absolutely awesome with the Chromeworks 2 into 2 uh, black chrome Eclipse exhaust. But this bike with the 2 into 1 with only a 107 and a 475 cam, it's just, it's insane. Uh, that's all I gotta say. It sounds absolutely awesome. Wait until you guys hear it in Daytona. Just, I love the sound. Um, what else did we miss anything? Let me see. Oh, so a few simple things. You guys could go back and check out the videos. I have the small $15 Apple CarPlay adapter inside. You got to take the fairing off. So you plug that in and then you will have Apple CarPlay. I also removed... You, you, you guys know you had this USB dongle inside the cubby. I don't have that anymore. If you, once you have this fairing out, you remove that dongle out of the cubby, you seal that hole up, and then you get yourself about a hundred bucks, an Apple CarPlay USB adapter, and you plug it in and you just stow it underneath the fairing. So now what happens is when I charge the phone, automatically, as soon as I kick my bike on, I have Apple CarPlay. I don't have to plug in any wires underneath into the phone. If you, on a stock bike, if you want Apple CarPlay to kick on, if you only add the $15 piece for Apple CarPlay, you're still going to have to plug your phone in to the USB, into the dongle, and then up into your phone. Hopefully you guys can understand that, but I don't have to do that now because I removed the dongle, put it inside here, inside the fairing with that CarPlay adapter. It's a Bluetooth adapter. So now it doesn't have to run through the USB wire. It runs all through Bluetooth, which, which is awesome because I was on all these rides, right? 25,000 miles on Silverback with all these damn wires dangling and hanging and you hit them and they fray after a while from the wind. So I wasn't going through that anymore. So now it's just super clean. There's no wires or nothing that I have to plug into the phone. All I do is snap my phone on there and I'm good to go. All right, I'm still, I'm looking for something. Oh yes, of course. We had to do, because of the plus two suspension, Nobody makes a plus two kickstand, they do make a plus one. So I did install the plus one kickstand, but you still have to install the one inch block underneath the kickstand. If anybody, please, if anybody knows of anybody that makes, that constructs a plus two kickstand, hit me up down in the comments below because I cannot find one. I'd rather have the correct plus two kickstand rather than having that block um, right there, if you guys could see it. I don't like that necessarily. I don't like how that looks. Let me see what else. Okay, so yes, the big thing here, we had some clutch issues with the stage two power on the 107. So what we did was, we obviously installed the best clutch system on the market, had it on Silverback after numerous attempts with other clutches that just couldn't hold the power. We have a Evolution Industries clutch basket and clutch. Go back to check out those videos because it is massive and it is absolutely unbelievable. It's good up to 160 horsepower. If I change the springs over to the red, it's good up to 200 horsepower. We don't need that, but you never, never know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And we also installed the Evolution Industries hardened ramp. Instead, uh, we didn't go with the Man of War compensator this time. We just went with a hardened ramp from Evolution Industries. So, man, it, it's pretty, I mean, it's bulletproof. I mean, we the trans is definitely good. A lot of people were asking me about the transmission. Listen, I had 25,000 miles on Silverback. We had a chain drive. We had 100. 56 horsepower and we never blew the trans so i think a lot of people get caught up on that i think a lot of people blow the trans themselves because they're missing gears and they're not actually engaging the gears all the way through before they start initiating full scotty power onto the bike so that's what happens once the gears if they're not fully engaged if they're only at the edges and you engage the power that shit will break 
That's why transmissions go. And once you shatter any gear, all those parts go into the whole works. And just if you ever see seen inside a transmission, you get some metal bits in there. It just it's going to blow the whole transmission up. So you know we still have the belt drive, which is absolutely sufficient for this power level transmission and like i just said it was good for silverback never had an issue with the trans it's definitely gonna be good for 116 horsepower i think we went over everything but the way the bike is set up the suspension the exhaust the engine the camshaft that 475 is sick uh power all the way up until 6500 rpm think about it the thing pulls and pulls and pulls and it sounds ridiculous. It's super, super reliable. It's not like a crazy, crazy build where you really have to worry about other things down the line. This is this is a really good build. Stage two, 475, nice exhaust. But like I said, I put the 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 devils in the detail where the plus two suspension, you know, the lighting, the bar setup, the seat. If you have good um, you don't have to like have crazy stuff done to the bike, but if, if you have the proper parts and good high quality parts, man, I'm telling you, that's all you need. This bike is definitely the my favorite bike even. I like it better than Silverback. I know a lot of you guys may think I'm crazy, but I just do. Because of the way it handles with the suspension, because of my seating position with the bars, the mid controls, and the seat. That's your triangle right there. And that is the most important, the seating triangle, right? Those three points on the bike, that is what's crucial. And it's just, this bike just, it fits me like a glove. I love how it handles. We knocked off about 50 pounds somewhat on the bike with the, oh yeah, the lithium battery, we knocked off about 24, 25 pounds. So now another thing in the back here, which I forgot to mention maybe on previous videos, this Roguelite standard came with the rear tail light here at the bottom. I didn't like that look. I wanted to be able, because the bike's sitting up higher, you see a lot more of the tire. I wanted to see even more of the tire. So I got rid of that lower light, which is actually attached to the side filler panels. So people were asking me, did you get new filler panels? I did not. I actually took off the filler panels with the light and really, really carefully with a coping saw cut, because this is thin plastic, I cut these filler panels off and reinstalled them. And that's the look right there. And you can't see nothing that I cut because if you take your time and cut it nice, you won't even scratch the paint. You cut them from underneath on an angle. It came out beautiful. You definitely wouldn't even be able to tell and that's how i removed um the lighting because i tried to get some filler filler panels i don't know i forgot what problem i had but i couldn't get them so i just kind of got kind of got pissed off and i just did it myself and it looks great because it's the same filler panels you don't have to spend any money and now without the rear light underneath the fender you could see the tire a lot which i love also i got a bunch of questions about my short antenna um i don't use the radio ever 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 i use bluetooth um i use sirius xm or my apple music because i don't like using a radio because most of the time i don't like the music that they're playing i want to listen to my own music and if i'm on a long trip I don't want to be searching for a station every 50 miles. So just to keep a kind of a, a better look and to remove it, all I did was cut it. That's it. I cut the antenna. So that's where the short, you don't have to, um, I actually just have to hit the top with some black paint. But other than that, there's no need to buy a little shorty antenna. Now for longer trips, I did get the docking hardware and I do have the chopped tour pack right there advan black tour pack which i definitely will be using on longer trips 100 percent. i really in the past didn't like how it looks but after having it and using it i'm not leaving home without it from now on on a longer trip i actually like the look now and the practicality of having that tour pack with you is just far too great to not actually have it on the bike. So yeah, I mean, I love the build. If you guys, if I missed anything, if you guys have any other questions, hit me up in the comments. I will be super happy to uh, explain to you guys. Or if I, like I said, if I forgot something, I will bring it up 
but I don't think I don't think I forgot anything. If anybody knows anybody, anybody that makes a plus two kickstand, hit me up in the comments. The Hayabusa is fantastic as well. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much. Hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. We'll see you guys later.